Well, I'll tell you what else the left is not happy about, but I I sure am, and that is that Dr. Fauci, Dr. Anthony Fauci, announced he will be retiring this December as of this week, and I am already grave dancing. I'm so excited about this. Ding Uh, dong, Fauci is gone. (laughs) He's gone. According to reporting from The Blaze, Dr. Anthony Fauci, Fauci, who is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and President Joe Biden's chief medical advisor, is stepping down at the end of the year. While the news is not exactly surprising, Fauci previously indicated that he would stay on through Biden's presidency. Um, it is it is still very, very good news. Um, basic details, he's 81. He announced Monday that he is not retiring per se, but leaving government service in pursuit of other career goals. Uh, yikes. He said, while I'm moving on from my current positions, I am not retiring. After more than 50 years of government service, I plan to pursue the next phase of my career while I still have so much energy and passion for my field. I want to use what I've learned as NIAID director to continue to advance science and public health and to inspire and mentor the next generation of scientific leaders as they help prepare the world to face future infectious disease threats, he added. Um, I do you feel like he's being pushed out given those statements? Because I kind of do. It sounds like he got offered some sort of other position, but he's being sort of coaxed to leave. That's my take on it. Yeah, I mean... I don't think so. I think they would keep him. I think he's getting he's going to get that bag. So he oh, is yeah. about to cash out on a probably big pharma, but some sort of corporate lobbyist medical industry job. And he is going to make millions if he does that. So I think that's what's going on here. First off, I didn't realize he was 81. Holy moly, that's ancient. Oh, How is he still cockroach. doing all this? Yeah, he's a cockroach in the government. I mean, keep in mind, like, this guy had already risen to the ranks where he's at, which is very high up in the whole, like, bureaucracy of government by the 1980s. He was in place to be a terrorist back then where he convinced everybody if you touch people with AIDS, you'd also get it and basically turn people with AIDS into lepers and created all kinds of very harmful effects then. But, like, he was already that that high in his career. So I, he's been prominent for a long time. It's just most of the time what he's doing is beneath the scenes and, and doesn't get a lot of scrutiny. And so he's been able to carry out some really horrific things during his time but yeah he's been around but so uh it's really interesting i did this exclusive reporting a while back uncovering the fact that a bunch of people at the nih fauci included have received royalty money from pharmaceutical companies and medical companies because of like they get credit for uh helping them invent things through their government grants and intertwinement and so they they're getting tens of thousands of dollars while still working at this agency responsible for regulating and grant giving this industry from the companies. And so there's this revolving door. And I imagine when he says, I'm just retiring from government, but I'm still going to keep contributing to public health. I wouldn't be shocked if Pfizer or one of these big companies unveils chief government, chief government relations officer, Dr. Anthony Fauci, $10 $10 million salary or whatever. Maybe that's a little much, but you get my point. Yeah. Um, that, and it will be an example of, of like a really famous person or a big person if that happens. But that actually happens all the time to a lesser all extent. This revolving door in our politics. And it's very swampy. It's very gross. Uh, and of course, he's still going to get that taxpayer funded government pension of $350,000 in annual payouts. Yeah, I actually covered something similar in in South Carolina recently where the Certificate of Need bill uh, failed to pass. It was right on the edge of passing. It it died a mysterious procedural death right before the session ended. And then turns out the Speaker of the House resigned and was promptly hired as the top lobbyist for the large hospital association that was working to defeat Certificate of Need. It's like, all right, (laughs) like, I guess we know what happened now. Yeah, that kind of stuff does happen all the time. So I think you're probably right that that's his trajectory. Listen, this man loves to get the bag. He's been pretty profitable as a government. Um, actor, but I think you can make a lot more outside of government. He's going to follow that money train. I also think he is somebody who is getting increasing scrutiny on his operations, right? Like, thanks to the work of White Coat Waste, which I work, you know, we found out about all of the extreme torturous experiments they've been carrying out on animals, specifically puppies, but lots of other animals too, under his direction, lots of taxpayer funded um, projects in that vein. And that's getting a lot of scrutiny, a lot of pushback recently. Rand Paul has been hot on his tail. It looks like they were performing gain of function research, even when there was a moratorium in place, which is a very risky kind of research. Increasingly, it, 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 it seems very apparent. That's what was happening in the Wuhan lab, where we believe that the coronavirus likely leaked from 
So he's basically lied to the American people on repeat. He said that we did not fund gain-of-function research. He said that that wasn't happening in the Wuhan lab. And then as that uh, was actually proven to be true by Dr. Rand Paul, he then tried to change the definition of gain-of-function research, right? I know. It goes on and on, but I think he's increasingly facing real scrutiny. Um, the story you did about the kickbacks that they're getting, I think as a whole, he's he sees that it's time to move on because uh, Rand Paul's hot on his tails, and I would really like to see uh, actual charges against him. I know that's not super realistic, but I, I would really like to see people in our in the Republican Party come together and actually hold his feet to the fire because I think this man has carried out crimes and I think that he's like what though lot. specifically? Well just the fact that they were carrying out gain of function research when there was a moratorium and they were forbidden from doing so. Somebody would should that be, be a criminal offense? I know so the one thing they could get him on potentially is lying to Congress with yeah, under oath Congress. which is a crime. Mm -hmm. Um but so and and Rand says uh, that he's going to keep investigating him regardless of whether he retires or not. He tweeted out Rand Paul tweeted out Fauci's resignation will not prevent a full throated investigation into the origins of the pandemic. He will be asked to testify under oath regarding any discussions he participated in concerning the lab leak. So if Republicans take the Senate, which they've got a good chance of doing, um, you can expect Fauci to be hauled in, to be subpoenaed, to have to testify. He's not going to get away from the scrutiny, I don't think. Um, I will say, you know, let's let's discuss this a little bit. I am a little bit uncomfortable with some of the rhetoric, and sometimes it's meant tongue in cheek, but sometimes it's not in terms of things like Fauci for Gitmo, um, <laughs> right? Where people libertarians are are very quick to say like lock him up, and I think he's done a very poor job. I think he's been deeply dishonest, but the idea that he has committed first off, I don't think we believe in Gitmo for anybody, right? Yep. Not even suspected terrorists. So I don't really like okay when libertarians say that. Um, and then the other thing is like, has he really committed crimes? Like I, I, I'm the only one, I guess, that, that I think is a crime crime that I've really heard would be lying to Congress. But even that, I think that's like a slap on the wrist kind of charge. I don't know. Uh, but this idea that we're going to lock him up it seems far-fetched to me, and it also seems like, do we really want to start locking up, you know, agency officials? Like, like, are they going to come for Betsy if Biden wins re-election, right? Like, or Kamala wins re-election and they come for Betsy and, and put my queen in behind bars for, I, don't, I just, I could <laughs> see this queen. spiraling. I see what you mean. Like, no, we do not want to incentivize political witch hunts where we're just going after people in the opposite party and we're looking to put them in prison. And I also don't think that we should have an overtly carceral approach to things. But I do think that when you look at government actors who, on the scale that he has, have committed fraud, have carried out injustices against the American people, have lied to the American people, have misused our resources, and have likely led to a disease that got millions of people killed, yeah, there has to be some accountability for that. Now, is it negligence? Is it intentional? I don't know. That's why there needs to be investigations. But I think it's ridiculous that we spend the resources we have investigating the January 6th protest and we haven't done that same thing or put that same scrutiny on the origins of COVID, right? It's mostly just been Rand Paul who has been continually uh, elevating this and looking into it. And every time he's done so, we find out more and more. So when it gets to what crimes has Fauci actually committed, we don't know yet because it hasn't gotten the scrutiny that it actually deserves. But we know with just a little bit of digging by a very small nonprofit and one senator, we have already uncovered mass corruption. We've uncovered lies from this person. We have found that they did. I mean, he did break the law. If there's a moratorium on gain of function research and you're still using taxpayer dollars to carry this out. That is breaking the law. You lie to Congress. You lie to the American people. That is breaking the law. I'm still I would still like more scrutiny around these kickbacks that they were getting and just how legal all of that was. Well, so those are legal. It's messed up. But those are legal. That system. It shouldn't be. But they are it's disgusting. The royalty payments. Yeah. But I see what you're saying, and I, I do think Fauci should be in prison. I really do, just given everything we found so far. But again, I'm not, I want an investigation. I believe in due process. I want to find out more about the origins of this disease, what they knew when they knew it, how much cover up there was going on behind the scenes. All of that, I think, needs to be laid bare. So I'm glad Rand's going to keep investigating. But no, Gitmo's never okay. We don't believe in torture. We do believe that politicians and people in government are not above the law, though. And I mean, often they are, right? They often don't get the actual accountability or are held accountable for their actions. So I think that we would want to see more of that. And hopefully that would 
clamp down on corruption within government, just like I was talking about in Tennessee. Um, but I, I don't want to be flippant about it either. I think you're right on that.